evening and welcome to Newsnight. Headlines on Newsnight is brought to you by Eden Heights. Eden Heights, welcome home. In the next 60 minutes, NDC Greater Accra Chairman Dares CID boss will arrest the party's national chairman, Samuel Fusan Puffo, insisting they will resist any form of intimidation by the police service. We are here because of our national chairman. We all know what is going on in this country regarding him. And we are waiting for anybody who thinks that he will come and do something that is untoward in this room. They will see the mind of NDC. Also in this edition, Boko Central MP Mahama Yarago officially challenges capacity of Martin Amidu to prosecute him because he's above retirement age. He's also insisting that the special prosecutor cannot prosecute him for tax evasion. We are saying that the offenses that he had brought against specific counts against our client Mahama Yarago do not fall within the remits of the powers of the special prosecutor. So we are Ghana's Inspector General of Police joins forces with Canadian officials to intensify their search for the two kidnapped expatriates in Kumasi. We have the latest as the team remains tight-lipped on progress made so far. Also, we ask what has become of the search for the three kidnapped Takradi girls. And in business, Global Shea Alliance advocates value for money as Ghana Exim Bank apportions 10 million CD facility to boost Shea production in the northern region. And in sports, Black Stars coach Kwasia Pia released 23 months squad for Ghana's AFCON 2019 campaign. And no cut-off point, Education Minister assures BEC candidates in Tripoli and the rest of the country they will be admitted into senior high schools only if they do not fail maths and science. So they should please stop the conflict because this year the cut-off grade is guaranteed to fight. No, there's no cut-off point. It's only when you fail in both English and mathematics that you have to go and risk it and come back. You have to set up with your maths and English. We'll bring you reports from parts of the country on day one of the week-long exam, including how a student living with cerebral palsy and three pregnant girls fared today. And that signals something. If you don't know already, the 2019 edition of the National Science and Math Quiz begins this week. And as part of our build-up, we put the spotlight on schools in the central region. And here from the quiz mistress, want to stay with us for that and more here on Newsnight. And Newsnight is brought to you by Puma Card from Puma Energy. Cash-free convenience. Do you join us with your thoughts and comments via WhatsApp on 0244-340-437. I am MFA Powell. My name is Evan Smith. And let's start with the NDC. NMF over the weekend, there's a statement that was issued by the NDC uh, warning that warning the CID not to attempt to arrest the national chairman in a way that embarrasses or demeans him. Well, today, uh, the NDC had been holding a major event, and one of the uh, uh, things that have come up is a direct uh, address to the uh, CID boss, daring her to arrest the party's national chairman, Samofu Swampofu, and the NDC Greater Accra chairman is insisting they will resist any form of intimidation by the police. The NDC had earlier uh, alleged, and we are yet to confirm this, by the way, that there's a bench warrant that has been secured by the police to arrest their national chairman. Uh, the police have been speaking to us. We'll tell you what they tell us shortly about the existence of this uh, bench warrant. The party accused the police of working with elements of the MPP vigilante forces to arrest the chairman in a manner aimed at lowering him in the esteem uh, of Ghanaians. In fact, the, the, the speculation from the NDC was that this event today, which was really to mark, uh, to begin the, 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 the celebration of the party's uh, 27 years, uh, was going to be the event at which the national chairman was going to be arrested. And so the event came off as the NDC had planned. And let's listen to Adekoka, who addressed the, what they believe to be the, the conspiracy to arrest him at that event. First and foremost, we are here because of our national chairman. We all know what is going on in this country regarding him. And so I'm very happy to see that this room is full. And we are waiting for anybody who thinks that he will come and do something that is untoward in this room. They will see the mind of Elvis. 
I am positive that the day is coming. All of us, 16 regions now, will marshal ourselves and make sure that we show the might of NDC. I think for a long time, we've become very dormant. So it's about time we pay our teeth. I'm sure some of you saw what happened in Hong Kong over the weekend. If you haven't, go and watch that tape. It's about time the great NDC send signals that, like the general said, like uh, our vice chairman said, we are not a party or a group of people that should take us for a ride. So please, let's get ourselves organized. It's very important. So that is uh, uh, Adeko Kahuzi, uh, Greater Accra Chairman of the party. By the way, the man the NDC had uh, alleged uh, was wanted by the police. In fact, was on a red warrant for his arrest. Was at this event, larger than life. He was not only speaking, but was uh, was leading in the chance to get the crowd pumped up. So that is some of some powerful. Uh, my colleague uh, Komla Dum was at this event. Uh, Komla, where were the officers there ready to arrest him? Evans, I did not see any police officer around um, the conference grounds earlier today, and so there was no attempt by police officials to arrest Mr. Yeah, Ampofo. you can see. What, 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 what are we hearing there, him doing so, what exactly? So, so this is Mr. Ampofo uh, leading the members who had gathered in that particular press room for the press conference. NDC members, you know, they were psyching and gearing them up for the conference proper, where they were looking to outline a number of um, activities that they were going to use to mark their 27th anniversary. So that was Mr. Ampofo in the sound, they're leading the party members. In fact, he led them in singing the, the anthem of the party and some of the um, cheerleading songs of the NDC that we are, we are known to have, and then also this particular one. Okay, so so if you don't understand the words of that, in simple terms, uh, go and tell them that we have God, you know, on our side, on our side and, and, you know, uh, the sinner... The bad, um, guy. The, ba the bad guy, just leave us alone. <laughs> just leave us or, alone, you know. You know you tell them that we have God on our side. So that's him leading that, that chance there. He didn't only lead the, the choir, so to speak. He himself uh, said a lot about the NDC and its ability to, to, to show that they've done a lot in comprising what others have done over the years. Absolutely, Evan. So, Ms. Ampofo, you know, went ahead to tout some of the achievements of the NDC. He spoke about the achievements of the NDC in health, speaking about building a lot of hospitals, uh, chips compounds, health centers across the country. He spoke about the NDC building schools, senior high schools, you know, the e-blocks, even tertiary schools. We have some of the technical universities and the universities themselves, he says, were built by the NDC. He spoke about road infrastructure. He spoke about energy and many others. The National Democratic Congress led governments are credited with the most impactful and significant development policies and programs since the inception of the Fourth Republic. In areas such as education, health sector, and very critical infrastructure, including strategic roads, the maintenance and increment of energy facilities, in all this, the NDC is unmatched in the provision of development to Ghana. We want to invite our people, or our opponents, the MPP, to tell us, ever since Kwame Nkuma established the three traditional universities, universities, virtually all the rest of the public universities in this country has been put in place by one NDC government or the other. Talk about the UDS, which was even established with seed money from the founder of the party, His Excellency, Jerry John Rollins. Talk about the e-blocks, and they talk about community high schools and talk about the community secondary schools which were started during the President Rollins era. All over the place, in my own region, I can remember uh, Old Tafu Ames, uh, they call it uh, AME Zion Secondary School. I can remember St. Stephen's Secondary School in Asiakwa. And then in Sutem Senior High Technical School, or Senior Presbyterian Secondary School, Kwabi, several. I'm just talking about the ones that I can just talk about in my own area. So, in the area of education, Moko Moko. No size. No size. 
Now, come on, there was something he said that caught my attention. There was something about no contribution, no chop. What exactly was he talking about? Absolutely, MFA. So, in line with the theme of the 27th anniversary celebrations, which is revitalizing the NDC for Victory 2020, targeting effective branch organization, the chairman says all the party members at the local level, the grassroots level, should put in a contribution. They should mobilize support, whichever way they can, so they are able to wrestle power in 2020. And once they're able to do that, their efforts are going to be rewarded. We mean business because we won't win 2020. I have been reminded that if you want to have a stake in the future NDC government and you want to hold a position in NDC in future, the first question the general secretary or a party register, have you been attending branch meetings? If you are in some DC position, some minister position, some board chairman position, please, the time to identify yourself and work for the party is now. Because, because, because this time round, no monkey the work, babu the chop. I am saying that no monkey the work, babu the chop. In 2020, it is NCNC, no contribution, no chop. Well, but Komla, you know, prior to uh, today's event, there's been talk about him being arrested and uh, there's a warrant for his arrest and all. Did he make any mention of it? MFA, he did not. Rather, he took a dig at the governing New Patriotic Party. He says the MPP is governing the country very poorly and a future NDC government is going to wrestle, uh, you know, the country from the reins of what he describes as an inept government. Ready to wrestle power from the cruelest inept and directionless government of the MPP led by Nana Adudankwa Akufuado. In 2020, the people of Ghana will have an opportunity to vote into office a tried and tested and the able and patriotic vision person John Dramani Mahama. In the times that we are, he is the only one that can save our country from the non-performing government of the MPP under Nana Arudankwa Akufuado. So that is some more uh, of Fusu Ampofo, is the national chairman of the NDC. And just our own checks. We've been running several checks uh, on the claim that the NDC had made in the statement that there is a, a bent warrant for his arrest. Uh, so far, our police sources have not been able to confirm that if that exists, um, or, or as far as that is concerned. Uh, and, uh, of course, the event went on today. He hasn't been arrested. Let's let's bring in the communications director of the party, Mr. Kakrasama. Mr. Kakrasama, thank you for your time here on Newsnight. Thank you very much, Mr. Ibans Mensah. So I, I saw your statement yesterday, uh, making the point that you've you've uh, you've come to this knowledge that there exists a bench warrant to arrest him, etc. I mean, clearly th that didn't happen today. How did you how did you come by this 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 information that there is? Because the police we checked, they won't confirm. Is does it really exist? We have credible sources in government and the security agencies, and they give us the information. We have absolutely no doubt that they trusted the, the truthfulness of the information, and we also trusted the truthfulness of the information, and we put it out. But what you feared never happened. There was not even an indication. I, that never, it said, I never said in that statement mm. that he'd be arrested on a particular day or time. I saw that his arrest was imminent. Okay, so you still believe that he he, he will be arrested or an attempt to he be made to arrest him? He will be arrested, yes. Okay, but if the police want to arrest him, they will. I mean, what's the big deal? That's, nobody, there's a, there's a law. Nobody, no, nobody has denied that. Yeah, but I'm just wondering what the, the point of that statement. The point of the statement is that we have heard rumors that they have obtained a warrant to come for him and that in coming for him they might additionally use some MPP vigilantes who may come and do things that may lower him in the esteem of the right thinking people of Ghana and that is what we are bringing to the attention of the people of Ghana so the, the, the sense I get from the statement was that, that, that this will be done in a way that embarrasses him Yes, that is so. That is, uh, that's what you suspect. And, and, yes. and you, you say the motive, if that is true, the motive will be what? Why would why the state agencies, in doing their legitimate constitutional job, um, and having respectfully invited him that he's turned down, and having secured a bench warrant, 
want to arrest him just so that they can embarrass him? It's a, it's a question that is very interesting for you to ask. But you see, the answer is a very short one. Your, your own journalist, Latif Idris, went to police headquarters to report on something. Policeman beat him. After now, we don't know who did it. Doesn't that surprise you? It happened at the police headquarters. Doesn't that surprise you? We are not living in normal times. Unless that is what you think. We are not living in normal times. If I talk about journalism alone, I've spoken about Latif Idris. Idris or Idris. I don't know what, if I got the name correct. What happened at Medina to that associate of Anas? He was shot. Up to today, we don't know who shot him. Your own colleague, Manasseh, we were told, went into exile. We don't know who even chased him. Nobody has told us who chased him out of this country. It has never happened since we came into constitutional rule in, in January 1993. That is not all. There's a lot of insecurity in this country. There are kidnappings. There are murders. There are abductions. All these things are going on. We don't see the head or tail. In addition, he has collapsed banks. He has collapsed other financial institutions. Put people in the streets, unemployed. You banks. say he has collapsed banks. That yes. is not accurate. What happened? But the, central, the central bank decided to do a cleanup. They found evidence of violations of the laws that govern the institutions, and the laws were enforced. That's what happened. I'm happy that you said that. You said the laws were what? Enforced. By human beings, is that not so? Yeah, so you said the, the human beings should enforce them. Hold on, please. Those human beings were appointed by Nana Kufado, true or false? I don't understand why that question, because if they, they, they were appointed by him to enforce the laws, and we're doing exactly that. Please, laws have to be enforced. I have no difficulty at all about that. But let's come back to, because we are actually diverting, let's come back to my own chairman, Ufusan Pofo. He is alleged to have made certain statements in a meeting with communicators at the party headquarters. That meeting allegedly took place after the Ayawaso incident. He is alleged to have made certain statements threatening people. You and I saw clear evidence at the initial inquiry of people being beaten, assault being committed. The things we saw with our own eyes, nobody has been punished. We are dealing with something that nobody saw. Only you. The police saw. And you are saying what? You should be calm. Um, so back to of someone for some powerful. Yes. Um, he is, he is, he's been, we know he was invited. He, yes. the party took a position that he would not go. No. Um, the, the party did, correct? Yes, you are right. Yes, uh-huh. Uh, and, and now the, you say there's a bench warrant. Um, yes. That you, I'm sure you acknowledge it's a, is a constitutional a duty of the CID to in fact move to arrest a person who has failed to cooperate with an investigation. You, you understand that? You agree? I don't know. You're not asking a question. No, no I'm, I'm, just, I'm just making a point. You acknowledge that. That the that CID, is... once they have sent an invitation, having, uh -huh. having said in the statement that intelligence points to him as a material... Uh, uh -huh. uh, they can prepare, that, they yes. can prepare the charges and take him straight to court. They don't need to invite him. They can do that. Why okay. Not? I'm grateful that you joined us. That is uh, the Director of Communications of the National Democratic Congress. And we must say that the basis of all this is a statement that the police, not a statement, an invitation that the police has written to some of us on uh, a few weeks back in which they had stated that they have intelligence and people that they've spoken to in relation to some of the kidnappings that had happened in the, in the country uh, had mentioned some of us on Pofo's name as, uh, as, as a possible um, person of interest. In, in those investigations, and that is why they had invited him to come. The party took a position then and held a press conference were now saying that some of us on Puffer will not uh, uh, honor the invitation, uh, and that is the basis of the of the suggestion that there's a bench warrant for his arrest, which the police can confirm to us. And it's been about six days since two Canadian women were kidnapped in Kumasi, and there's been no sign of their whereabouts. The two women, aged 19 and 20, were bundled into a red Toyota car at the entrance of a private hotel when they stepped out of an Uber vehicle. The Uber driver, who transported the victims from a restaurant at Asukwa and witnessed the abduction of the two, has since been assisting police investigations. Now, the Inspector General of Police, David Asantia Piotu, has joined officials from the Canadian High Commission in Kumasi to intensify the search.
Gossett. We'll bring you the latest on the IGP's visit, but first, here's a wrap of the event leading to today's visit by the police hierarchy. The arrival of the officers, including a specialist in bargaining, is seen as a boost to the investigations into the disappearance of the two Canadian nationals. It took police over 48 hours to issue official statement on the kidnapping. The disappeared ladies until then have been working with a non-governmental organization, Youth Challenge International. On June 4, 2019, when they were seized at Ijaiso, it was less than two months after an Indian national was rescued after his captors demanded a ransom of $500,000 in bitcoins. The four men are said to have fired several warning shots from a foreign pistol to ward off onlookers at about 8.25 p.m. The Canadian High Commissioner to Ghana led a delegation to Kumasi a day after the two women were kidnapped and served notice experts will be brought from abroad to support investigations. Police in a statement on June 6, 2019, Ask the media to be circumspect of the sensitive nature of the issue. It also urged the public to volunteer information on the victims and the kidnappers. But police have since failed to publish the pictures of the victims, who are believed to have been in the country less than two weeks prior to their kidnap. Police have since been busy following leads that could lead to the rescue of the two expatriates. Inspector General of Police, David Asantia Pietu and the Deputy Canadian High Commissioner were in Kumasi over the weekend to receive briefing on investigations into the kidnapping of the woman. From Kumasi for Joy News, Oyim Interior reporting. And Oyim Interior joins us live with the latest update from the IGP's visit. But first of all, Oyim, let me find out from you, is the IGP still in Kumasi? Not at all. MFR, the IGP has since left for Accra after receiving briefing from the regional police headquarters in Kumasi. And have you picked any information as to what he's been saying since he's been in the region? From my police sources, he was satisfied with the work done so far by the uh, Shanti Regional Office of the Criminal Investigations Department after he received a briefing on what the team has done as far as investigations into the disappearance of the two women are concerned. And then from there, he also assured them of the police hierarchy's support uh, in their effort to unravel the circumstances you know, surrounding the disappearance of the women and also uh, ask them to you know, speed up with the investigations uh, because of the sensitive nature, the international uh, dimension that the case has taken. It's been about six days since these two women went missing. Have we picked up any positive leads as to where they are? Have we heard anybody asking for a ransom or anything of the sort? It is so unknown that uh, these uh, suspects or those behind the kidnapping have placed calls to the families of the uh, victims uh, demanding ransom. That has not been done so far. Uh, but uh, police uh, sources tell me that they have picked uh, positive leads and uh, that is what they will say. They wouldn't want to go further with any detail, except that they have picked uh, positive leads in their pursuit of their kidnappers, and then efforts to also uh, rescue the two women are also underway. Uh, just this afternoon, the uh, team from Canada uh, received uh, briefings from the regional uh, police uh, headquarters. I'm told uh, this particular briefing will continue tomorrow, and from there, the team will want to move swiftly into action uh, to kickstart uh, what they believe uh, could also be their support to the local uh, police here uh, to rescue the two women uh, who have been in the country uh, for quite less than three weeks before they were kidnapped by uh, these four uh, gun wearing men who bundled them into a waiting Toyota uh, Kuraka. But just before I let you off uh, briefly, though, Oheming, I would want to get this clarification. Are the Canadian officials leading this search or their counterparts in Ghana are doing so or they are working hand in hand? How is it happening? They, they are working hand in hand with the local police here in Kumasi. First, it was the local police uh, which kickstarted the investigations before even the arrival of the Canadian High Commissioner with a team from Accra. 
I'm told among the team members who arrived a day after the women were kidnapped included security officers uh, who offered their support uh, to their local police officers. Uh, but uh, since then, they have been working hand in hand uh, in pursuit of the kidnappers and also to ensure that they rescue uh, the two women on head. My colleague there, Heming Terrier, they're bringing us up to speed on the latest on this investigation. Well, uh, following this incident, two separate alerts have, we know have now been issued by the Canadian Embassy and the United Kingdom uh, High Commission to Ghana as well, uh, to their nationals about the violent crimes in the country, including kidnappings and terrorist activity. Security analyst Dr. Vladimir Chudansu says the possibility that the kidnappings may be a ploy to make government unpopular cannot be discounted. He spoke to my colleague, Mama Vyoso Abaji, on the AM show. Ghana being what it is, mind you, in several places so. Are we sure some people are not hiding the truth somewhere? Are you sure some people are not supporting this one way or the other, be it I political? Said local people. Local people, local people. Somebody hasn't seen that. Just, just, just to make it seem like the place is insecure? Exactly, exactly. It's, it's possible. I'm not saying it's happening. But I haven't seen $10,000 before. Right? Suppose you keep these guys for two days and get 10000 I would do it somehow. I'm not saying that's the truth. But it's possible within our setup where corruption is at its highest mm. and, and, and uh, patriotism is dead in Ghana. So this could well you know, be political? It could be political. It could. Why not? I mean, if you really want to make uh, Ghana look ungovernable, Ghana look bad in the eyes of the population and in the eyes of the international community, I mean, you, you could always do something to disturb a government. I'm not saying it's happening. But supposing somebody wants to make a kufuado, a kufuado, a drunk kufuado, he says, let's see, look bad in the eyes of them mm. for the next election. Or supposing uh, somebody without his party even has the way without to make it, uh, Ghana ungovernable. Mm. As we speak right now, there is a possibility that big, big, big businesses are thinking of, you know, the efflux of their monies. You heard there, Dr. Vladimir Enchidan. So now another security analyst, a Kenor retired Festus Sabwaji, believes the police ought to be doing more to step up security. He cites inadequate visibility of the police on the ground as contributing to the increase in criminal activities, including kidnapping. He spoke on the Super Morning Show today. Uh, our police patrolling our highways, not, not the static uh, points that we find where they plug you, pull you to the side of the road, show me. No, 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 no. Actually, on motorbikes and on vehicles, moving up and down within certain stretches of highways. There are a whole lot of things that they can do. Of course, in general, police visibility. As we speak, do you see the police within the society? You don't see them, you see. So the sense that one gets, indeed the sense that these criminals will get is that. And the criminals know the community, they know the society. They know routes. In fact, they know where all the police static points are. Can I retire first of Sabwaji? Well, now, listen to this. We've had to bring in, you know, some foreign support in areas that we think that we need strengthening. You're talking about the three the, the, tiny the, the, girls. The, 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 yes, yeah. we have to bring them. It's Ghana and Nigeria, and that is also a very important axis because, you know, Ghana and Nigeria are, are very much related because if as a Ghanaian, where you be, Apart from Ghana, you say Nigeria and, and, and vice versa. I believe that we will get results. What is, I it? Believe. is it? The FBI or who? who are well, people? everyone. The FBI in Nigeria. We we just we are not limited. Scotland Yard and all that. We've had some Scotland Yard people come to even do training as part of the transformation. Mm -hmm. And so we 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 work anybody, the Chinese, whoever. Because we believe that the girls are still alive and not beyond our reach. Well, that is Ghana's interior minister, Ambrose Derry, months ago, assuring that the three Takrade girls will be found. Days and weeks after the Director General of uh, Police CID, uh, C days after, I beg your pardon, CID, uh, Director General CID, uh, Mami Tiwa Adudankwa, also assured that the girls will be reunited with their families soon. That did not happen. There have been several assurances before and after, but still no sign of these girls. Ruth Lovequason has been missing for six months, six days. Prisla Mansibia Kranche, five months, three weeks. And Prisla Blessin Bintum has been gone for eight months. And it raises questions about the status of the search as we speak. Has it been called off? Is it still on? 
there remain questions begging for answers. But over the weekend, there was a demonstration by residents of Takrade to continue to pile pressure on authorities to find these girls. Inathalia Kwansa is our Western Regional Correspondent, and uh, she'll join us uh, shortly uh, with some details on that. She's been interacting with family as well, raising concerns because it looks like they've still not heard anything from authorities that are leading this search. We will, we will delve into that uh, details for you shortly on, on the on the search, the latest on the search uh, for the three missing girls in Takrade. And later, uh, we'll also bring you the story of uh, Mahama Yariga, whose lawyers have filed fresh documents uh, in court, uh, challenging uh, the, the status of the special prosecutor himself, officially uh, challenging his capacity uh, to prosecute him because he's, uh, he's above retirement age. He's also insisting the special prosecutor cannot prosecute him uh, for tax evasion because of uh, what they believe to be uh, um, jurisdictional uh, issues. We can go on to the phone lines now and speak to my colleague, in Natalia Kwanza, who has been following the story of the three uh, missing girls in Takrade. Now, Ina, you've been interacting uh, with families of these three missing girls after the demonstration and even prior to this demonstration. Have they been briefed on where these girls are? Have they had any sign of whether these girls will be found anytime soon? No, I'm not, Apparently, um, the police introduced the liaison officers to these families and they told me that these liaison officers have not been to their houses. They go there themselves to find out if there has been any new developments, but they tell them nothing. They do not know what is happening. So the family are left in the dark. They are still where they are the last time we spoke to them. And they're saying that these liaison officers are not uh, working with them. But there was a demonstration on Saturday, for instance. Uh, we know that a number of groups came together to hit the streets. Why was this necessary? Because th this is not the first time we're seeing this. Yes, and if, uh, for them, they said they think um, the way the case has been handled is not the best. And though they've had demonstrations upon demonstrations, the time is just taken each time. Looking at the months and almost years that these girls have been gone, and that they had also raised an issue of two police officers at the top of the central police station who were in charge of the case, who have been transferred. Basically, they are demanding that they are being brought back to their post because they were handling the case. And they also raised the issue with um, the founder of Glorious Way Chapel International, um, NSO Suben. But for some of his comments he made, the demonstration was just to tell the president that he should have him arrested and then questioned as to the comments he made that he knows where the girls are. So these are basically some of the reasons. And then the dismissal of the CID boss, which they have been calling for, since that day that he came, she came back and said that um, she didn't really mean that she knew where the girls were. But curious though, Ina, are they still hopeful that these girls will be found? Yes, for the family, they are hopeful. But when you speak to residents, some of them feel that uh, the girls will never be found. So the police should just come out both and then tell the families that this and this is the situation. So that if they can just forego the trauma they are going through, because it's a different thing knowing that your child is dead. And it's a different thing knowing that your child is somewhere and you don't even know what is um, happening. My colleague there, Inathalia Kwanza, bringing us the latest on that situation. You're still listening to News Tonight. It's on Joy 99.7 FM. A few of your messages on our WhatsApp console. Kofi says, almost all the police personnel in Ghana are busily arresting trotro drivers. They have no or little knowledge about intelligence. That's his view there. Uh, Nana on the Spinters Road says, Evans, there isn't anything political about these kidnappings. These kidnappers are opportunists. Those in Kumasi realized the tidy guys, uh, tidy girls, uh, tidy guys succeeded. Hence, they also tried and they seem to be succeeding. That's Nana's view there. And Kofi sent us this one. He says, it is, is it not nauseating that the IGP has found it important to help the Canadians to look for their citizens when, in fact, the whereabouts of the Takrade kidnapped girls is still in limbo. Uh, those are our views. Keep them coming on WhatsApp 244 340 It's now time for business. And Charles Ayute 
It's here with the very latest hello <laughs> child. I mean, for why are you smiling? <laughs> why? Like, Let's just mention enter the name. Oh, why? How did I mention the name? Charles, please mention your name. I'm Charles Aite. Okay. Is yeah. that, isn't that that's how I said it? That's Charles Aite. Okay. Isn't that what I said? Okay, that's what you said. That's what you said. <laughs> MFR anyway. has a crush on you, by the way. I'm just telling you. <laughs> I doubt but he's that. a nice guy. Why? Ah, he's the one that's laughing. He can no longer read the news. Just make sure you don't make mistakes, you know. I wouldn't make any mistakes. What do you have in the headline? Yeah, so coming up in business, Global Share Alliance advocates value for money as Ghana Exim Bank apportions 10 million city facility to boost sheep production in the northern region. And entrepreneurs across Ghana and Africa want governments and the private sector to channel resources into building capacity of small and business, small and growing businesses. Business on News Night is brought to you by MT and welcome to a new world of business. Kingdom Books and Stationery, your number one stop shop for all office essentials. And First National Bank, we are the bank that understands your business. First National Bank, how can we help you? Brand new Samsung 65 inch UHD Smart TV. And a brand new 2019 Hyundai. And a few 3,000 Ghana. Ah, The journey of a thousand smiles. Yes, just yet 10 years ago. And to celebrate this milestone, MTN a give you away exciting prizes in the MTN Momo Attend promo. Yeah, you new to Momo. No? You could win one of the nine. 2019 Hyundai item cars, your some or Samsung smart TVs for baby, and they have to 3,000 CDs e cash every month. And a grand price, you know, 2019 Hyundai Santa Fe in the MTN Momo attend promo. It's signing on and they keep using your MTN Momo. Now, when it big, if it's happening, you have to see August every year only on Ghana's best network. Daily star 120 hash. A check of points, terms and conditions apply. Just Momo it with there for you everywhere you go. We stay above the rest. More quality, more affordability. Kingdom Bush and Stationery. Everybody's going to the one and only shop. With customer satisfaction, it's a guarantee. Kingdom Bush and Stationery. Oh, yes. With our 30 days credit facility with no interest charge, free delivery services, and our free consultation on setting up your office, Kingdom Books and Stationery is unmatched in our delivery of quality and affordable office essentials, equipment, and furniture. Experience world-class customer service in all our branches in Accra, Temba, Kumasi, Cape Coast, and Takwadi. Call us on 0302-764-101. Or visit our website at www. KingdomGH.com Kingdom Books and Stationery Your number one stop shop for all of its essentials Kingdom and stationery Terms and conditions apply Um, honey, I need to get some But tissue. I don't have cash on me mm. Let me get some fuel quickly and, and let's go And how are you going to get the fuel? I thought you said you didn't have cash on you what is this one? My Puma card. All it takes is a card. The Puma card allows you to buy fuel cash-free from all Puma energy filling stations. You can use your Puma card with any visa points of sale and ATM across the country. The Puma card also works on mobile money. You get amazing discounts when you fill up with your Puma card. So register for free and get your Puma card instantly at any Puma filling station. And you only got one for yourself, eh? Yeah, would I have had that piece of mind? Oh, thank you, honey. And where are you going? I'm getting something from the shop real quick. I need to test the card. <laughs> Puma card. Cash-free convenience. But about you, but the recent test shows your cholesterol level has normalized. You stopped eating those fatty foods, eh? Doc, in Chichirina. Oh, I've reduced it significantly. That's very good. Mara made change in my diet in po. I now eat beans, garden wow. eggs, okra, and the likes. Really nice. And when I cook with oil, I add required amounts of frital vegetable oil to taste. It's a cholesterol-free oil and fortified with vitamin A. Well done, Madam Machiba. She, Mara Mabinu, Mabin Dread. <laughs> Enjoy great tasting meals with Frital, your cholesterol-free cooking oil fortified with vitamin A. Frital, love your food, love your life. This advertisement has been vetted and approved by the FDA. What can 20 Ghana cities buy here? Airtime. Taxi or trot trophy. Hot. Again, Bumadox. Oh, I see. 
for you. Drip and dye your hands on your hot, sunny afternoon. You think it, <laughs> and that's exactly what we'll give you when you buy the Roverman Productions Early Bird Ticket. From the stables of Uncle Lebo White comes the play, I Want Your Wife. From now till 16th June, you can buy Early Bird Tickets at 60 Ghana cities, saving you a whopping 20 Ghana cities for that kinky or ice cream. And tickets are available at Joy FM, selected shell shops, and our regular outlet. WhatsApp us on 050-554-6030 for delivery. This production is sponsored by Bond Savings and Loans, Old Mutual Life Assurance Company Limited, and Crush Fruit Juice. Notes, early bird tickets are valid for 5th and 7th July. Media partners, Joy Affair, Hits Affair, Joy News, Joy Prime, and Adum TV. Buy your tickets now. Imagine living in a world of comfort and luxury. In a well-planned and gated community with access to an ultra-modern sports complex which has Olympic-sized swimming pools, football, basketball, athletics, and gym facilities. I'm talking about Eden Heights, the new destination for luxury in Ghana. Eden Heights is developed with the highest grade of finishing in our penthouses in our one to four bedroom apartments and is located close to the beach resorts along the Atlantic Ocean, about 30 minutes drive from the airport and five minutes walk from the West Hills Mall. Eden Heights is the ideal location for luxury. Visit us at edenheights.com.gh or email to sales at edenheights.com.gh or call us on 050-153-1444 or 050-153-1445 for more information. Eden Heights, welcome home. Joy 99.7 FM. And you're welcome to business with me, Charles Aite. Now, the managing director of Global Share Alliance, Aaron Edu, has called on Exim Bank Ghana to ensure value for money in the discharge of 10 million cities for capacity building of about 1,600 small scale sheep farmers in the northern region. According to him, the productivity of these sheep farmers must solely be based on intense supervision and support. To ensure value for money for this project, we think that it will be more. I mean, it will be more beneficial to empower more women to do more collection. Um, it comes in three, four months in the year, and so when collection is not increased, when we don't have enough of the kennels, um, then they will not be able to process the whole year. You have a five ton per day uh, plant, and then if you don't stock enough kennels. Uh, so I think that a lot of effort should go into supporting the women to collect and store and then we'll be able to have um, the processing done throughout the year. MD of Global Share Alliance, Aaron Edu. Now, the new general insurance firm, Bedrock Insurance, says it is poised to meet the new 50 million city minimum capital requirement set by the National Insurance Commission, NIC. The NIC at the beginning of 2019 disclosed plans to increase capital levels from the current 15 million cities to about 50 million cities. Here is the Bedrock Insurance Company's chief executive, Albert Eisen Ganter, who has been speaking to Joy Business. We had a license in December 2017, but we're putting our structures together, making sure that we had the software in place before coming out. We entered the free at a time when all these issues started coming up. We're ready. Our shareholders are ready. We're here for the long haul. The NIC, once they announce the new minimum capital requirement, they're going to give insurance companies 18 months. And for companies that were licensed less than five years ago, they're going to have 24 months to comply. And for us, I think that is long enough time for us to put our assets together. We're here for the long run, the long haul, so that's not a problem. We want to change the narrative. The narrative is always that insurance companies don't like to pay claims. Insurance companies are boring, but I'm sure if you take a look at our brand, this is indicative of our commitment to quality, adaptability, and then style. So what are we going to do different? We want to bring convenience. We are going to leverage our new software, robust software, which we, we got from Kenya. Albert Eisen Ganser is the Bedrock Insurance Company's chief executive. MTN Ghana is encouraging businesses to take corporate social responsibility serious in order to build good relations within the community they operate. The telecom firm, as part of its corporate social responsibility, is supporting vocational training through the establishment of a hostel facility to support the Women Action Group Vocational Training Center at Pantan. Let's hear from the CEO of MTN Ghana, Selom Adadivo. This project is part of our 21 days of yellow care and the theme for this year is creating a brighter future for our youth. Now it's important that our staff participate because one, 
Um, if you really want to support your communities in which we operate, we think it's best to do that through our staff, at least for a period during the year. So we've dedicated June to be that, that month. The CEO of MTN Ghana, Selam Adadifo, just before we leave, access to finance and markets remain a challenge to SMEs, especially in Ghana and Sierra Leone. To this effect, the Managing Director for MDF West Africa and Innovation Hub, a regional training and consultancy provider, Richard Yeboah, has been calling on government and the private sector to intervene as a matter of urgency. According to him, this could shore up investment in the country and make Ghana an enabling environment for small-scale businesses. And that's how we end business on Newsnight with me, Charles Aite Evans. Uh, thank you very much, Charles. Your success, our passion. Thank you, folks. On my A list today, show some love for Contractor EB. <laughs> so, Contractor, yeah. what do you think about the country's changing skyline? Oh, send them down there, show you, man. Across skyline, they change you. Pop, 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 pop. Wow. Contractor, don't you get worried when you hear of buildings collapsing? I'm not from a now swan on Tassam. Ninginara, it is the lackability of using low quality product. Too. Please explain why. Yeah, cement is a no quality on the gasem. Village of Fefio Yosiwe, it was built with gasem. Says the gasem, they all construct. Gasem, three cement grates, greater value. Gasem, the nation builder. Vodafone Magic Recharger land you. Buy a recharge card or top up credit via my Vodafone app, Vodafone Cash, and win up to 100 times bonus. Yes, 100 times bonus. Like we do on Vodafone, share your top up pin with two friends to also enjoy bonus credits. There's more. Stand a chance to win daily, weekly, and monthly prizes like a trip to Dubai for two, a Hyundai Creta, motorbikes, phones, airtime, Vodafone Cash, and many more. <sighs> Simply subscribe to Vodafone Magic Recharge for free on Star 561 Hash to win. Terms and conditions apply. The future is exciting. Ready? It's time to experience something different, unexpected, and definitely beyond banking. It's a new era at GCB Bank, Ghana's most welcoming bank, where we offer you a world of financial security, flexibility, and convenience. We swiftly serve you with over 180 branches and 300 ATMs and provide e-banking solutions that make it possible for you to bank anywhere, anytime. When you need a personal loan, sooner is better than later, so we give it to you in 24 hours to make sure the experience is always memorable. At GCB, your opportunities are limitless and we keep you smiling at all times. We're bigger and better, ready to take you beyond banking. GCB Bank, your bank for life. FM. Thanks for staying with us here on Newsnight. Now, Boku Central MP Mahama Ayaraga is challenging the capacity of Martin Amidu to prosecute him because he's above retirement age. He's also insisting that the special prosecutor cannot prosecute him for tax evasion because that is outside the domain of his office. Ms. Ayaraga's lawyers have filed a motion to that effect, and the judge has said next week, Monday, to rule on it. His lawyer, Eduji Tamaklo, has been explaining the basis for the action.
Uh, we have raised issues about the capacity and the qualification of the special prosecutor. We have also raised an issue about the remits of the special prosecutor, the kind of offenses that he can investigate. The maker of the law, that is Parliament, stated that he can only investigate corruption and corruption-related offenses. We are saying that the offenses that he had brought against specific counts, against our client, Mahama Yaga, do not fall within the remits of the powers of the special prosecutor. So we expect my lord to make a decision on that. And you know there's a similar case on the retirement of the, the special prosecutor at the Supreme Court. And sub subsequently, we'll get to some more education on that matter, whether it affects the case at the Supreme at the High Court as we speak. Let's do sports, though. Interesting. Hans no age <laughs> issues with regards to the 23-month squad mm -hmm. selected by Coach Kwesi Apia to represent Ghana at AFCON 2019. And uh, uh, the final squad was announced just before um, we hit the studios. And after announcing an initial 29-month squad in May, Kwesi Apia has trimmed that number down to 23 players. The major surprise was the omission of striker Abdul Majid Waris and um, the inclusion of Kobna Owusu, who, who made his first appearance for the Black Stars on Sunday against Namibia. Other omissions are Ibenezo Ofori, Yao Yabua, home base duo Abdul Fatal Safiu and Mohamed Al Hassan, as, as well as Musa Nuhu, who got injured and left for his club in Switzerland. So let me go through the 23 players who will be representing Ghana at AFCON 2019. Goalkeepers Richard Ofori, Lawrence Atizigi and Felix Annan. Defenders John Boy and the Yadom, Abdul Babarahman, Lumo Agbenyenu, Kasim Nuhu, Jonathan Mensa, Joseph Edu and Joseph Atama Lawe. The midfielders are Mubarak Kwakasu, Thomas Pate, Kodra Samoa, Thomas Ejapon, Efri Yakwa, Andre Ayu, the skipper of the side, Christian Achu and Samuel Owusu and strikers are Samwajan, Jordan Ayu, Kalebe Kuban, and Kwabna Owusu. That's your sports. Uh, thank you very much, Hans Mensando. When we are in our various houses, we cannot do anything about it. So they should please stop the conflict because this year the cut of grade is between to five. And as we are in the house, we cannot do anything. I'm crying because we are suffering. The government should do something about this conflict. Because well, that's a cry really of a final year people at uh, Tripoli who was worried about the impact of the conflict on their performance in this year's BC, uh, which started today. We'll find out how uh, they fared on day one and bring you what uh, may sound like hope for these children who are worried about their academic progression. We know that over 500,000 candidates across the country sat for the English language paper, which excludes some 62 students who were registered by the headmaster of a preparatory school in Aflao. The reason is simple. They are foreigners, mainly Togolese and Nigerians. MCE for Ketu South, Elliot Edem Agbeno, uh, tells Joy News the head teacher is currently in the grips of the police. Morning to the various centers where the BC uh, is ongoing. Uh, even, uh, in fact, earlier on we have picked an intelligence and uh, the intelligent officers were working on it. Uh, we were informed that 68 students um, who schooled in Lome, Togo, specifically Deco, the name of the school is Faith Mission School, uh, have been registered by um, Mr. Mauli. Who is the proprietor? Who is the proprietor and the owner of uh, Kekeli International School, a private school in Aflao, in the Ketu South Municipality? Uh, the issue is that uh, these people have schooled in Togo. They are mainly Nigerians and Togolese. They schooled in Togo from first year up to uh, form three. Then he registered them as Ghanaian students. With now, the Deputy Education Minister, Dr. Yao Educhum, has been commenting on this particular issue. He believes that the move was part of plans to take advantage of the free SHS program. I think uh, the, uh, the, the security agency did the right thing. Because, you see, not only are they interested in writing our exams, but they're interested in getting our, into a free senior high school. And I don't think that is something that's acceptable. Is this, is this the first time we're having this problem and it's because of so, the free so SHS? I, I, of course. I mean, if you write the BEC and they don't indicate that you are a, a foreigner, it means you're going to place you automatically. Hmm. So, so if you are writing the exams and, and the head teacher do not register you as a foreigner, then he's aiding you to get into a high school as Ghanaian children and, and that is not acceptable. 
Now, uh, let's head to Tripoli. You know, uh, you heard that girl crying about uh, the, whether they are going to make the pass mark and all. Our correspondent, Martina Bugri, has been interacting with some of these students who say the paper was tough. Said yesterday, I was with you when you clamors to check your index numbers. We thank God this morning we all woke up very well and we are in the mood of writing the exams. Already, we are fast in advance. Okay? Yes. For, for every difficult situation, behind is what? Is action. Okay? So let's accommodate and try to see. We are going to pass. I've decided to wear white white this morning to show you that we are starting the exams on a good note and we are finishing on a good note. Yeah, yeah. And inshallah, we are all going to make it with the better grace we are looking for. So I want to encourage our brothers who came from that every situation here is calm. Everybody should feel at ease, feel at home to write the exam. Let's not be thinking of the past, okay? Yes. Today is a new day. What has passed is a prologue, it's history. So let's forget of the past and look at the fresh one. I suppose to travel by Wednesday. They have pledged, I'll be with you to the end of the exam. So an interaction there between the education official there in Tripoli and the students who we know going into this way and shows successfully they've written the first day and of course the many days lie ahead and they've had security now to keep them safe during the period. Well, among the 262 candidates who wrote the exams at La St. Paul's Basic School is one teenager, Hemen Ado Akbutia Sean, who is living with the cerebral palsy. He's one of the few persons living with disability right in these exams. Uh, Herman was recently featured in the Joe News Hotline documentary titled Born Special, which highlighted the plight of persons living with a, with a, with a, with a particular uh, uh, disability. Beryl Nessina Richter caught up with him at the examination center at La and has filed this report. 18-year-old Herman was born with cerebral palsy. According to his mother, Mavis Yomuti Kotete, doctors told her that her son would not be able to perform basic tasks like his age mates. Despite this hard truth told to Mavis, she remained a strong tower of support. The doctor told me because of Herman's condition, he would not develop early like other children, and this will affect his movement, speech, and other activities. I accepted this and never stopped praying to God. Today, it is this support that has pushed Herman to climb the educational ladder. He's among the 122 males writing this year's B.C. at the last St. Paul's Busy School. At the time of my visit, it was almost to the end of the first paper, English language. Stop work. Supervisor for the center, Benis Belinda Bula, tells me how enthusiastic Herman was proud to the start of the exams. He's so much confident and he's writing his paper. How did, I'm you curious, how did he... He was growing up. His friends were there for him. He would love the whole situation. What was his mood? Oh, he's all right. He's... And uh, we wish him all the best uh, with the rest of the papers. Now, the minority on uh, the Parliament's Finance Committee is demanding government sanctions contractors who failed or poorly executed all funded projects. This comes on the heels of Joy News' latest hotline documentary, Leaking Oil, which highlights the misuse of oil revenue. The cost of 21 road projects funded with taxpayers' money in Greater Accra, Ashanti, Eastern and Volta regions jumped from 80 million to 395 million cities after completion. There's more in this report. There were 21 roads that were awarded in the Greater Accra, Ashanti, Easting and Volta regions. Over 81 million cities of oil money was used. By the time the project was done, it had cost the taxpayer over 395 million CDs. Dr. Steve Mantiao is chairman of the committee. For me, what was even more, more worrying about such projects was the fact that they were leading to um, increasing cost of completing the project. But by the time you come back to continue with the projects, the cost would have escalated. You need to do variations and all that. And, and, and those could lead to uh, inefficient use of public resources. I am here at Bremai and heading towards Sepe Dote in the Ashanti region. In 2011, government awarded the rehabilitation of a Bremai UGC and Sepe Dote main road to Coffee Job Company Limited. The original contract sum was over 4.9 million CDs. By the time the project was completed in 2014, 
The figure had shot up to over 8.7 million CDs, according to a 2017 PIAC inspections report. This is a 77% increase in the project cost. But motorists who use the road are unhappy with the poor quality of work. <laughs> Well, uh, for those on the uh, Mines and Energy Committee in Parliament and the Finance Committee as well, they want uh, some more work done to probe uh, the subject as uh, Kwiti had uncovered in that documentary. Well, that is the sick tune for the National Science and Mass Squares. squares. Uh, I've forgotten the name of the school again. Ola Girls. Ah, uh, okay, that's cool. Uh, by the way, what, really? what, what, how did they fare last year? <laughs> we went far. <laughs> <laughs> how did it feel? Like, what's that? We went far. Well, Expect far away. this year. Were you in the final? With a lot of activism, Were you in the final? dynamism, Were you in the final? and amplifying. Were you in the final? Yeah. Were you in the final? No, I said Semi-final? No. We I mean, far must have a particular definite, you know, category. Matter. We went far. <laughs> what is your problem? <laughs> well, I went to St. Thomas Aquinas and we were and in so. the final, was it? Yeah, we were in the final, you know. And so we expect what you are you doubt that? Yeah, I'm just thinking. I thought it was three years ago. <laughs> <laughs> By the way, uh, it's got to come up. They're going to launch it tomorrow, and I'm sure the rivalry will start. And it's just it's a matter of course that we'll be in a final again. In fact, the two years running, we've been there. Watch you out know, for the surprises. Uh, from from the women. From Ola. <laughs> Ola girls. Ola. 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 Ola, Ola means something. Singing. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> he was singing. So, but, I mean, so, so you, 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 you don't want to miss it when it starts, but the launch is tomorrow. And it's going to be live on the, on the Johnny channel, channel um, and all, and all our, our, our social our media platforms, platforms, platforms as well. well. So make sure you join. If you went to a good school like Pai, or forget about you know, where you were, just, just, just participate and watch. <laughs> so remember, why are you jealous? There are lots of surprises this year. Uh, yeah, like a lot winning the contest. It's very possible. Oh, I thought you said it, it would be, it, it we will. Yes, it's very possible. Okay, we, we, <laughs> that's it for News Night tonight. My name is Evans Winter. I am Emma Falco. <laughs>